The return of the home inspection. As the real estate market evolves, we have seen more home inspections coming into play. And today I've got one of our local experts who has done thousands of home inspections. And I'm excited to have him on here to give us the insight as to what's going on with home inspections here on the shore. So everybody, I'm pleased to introduce you to John James with Authority Inspections. Uh, thank you so much for coming on here, John. Thank you for having me, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, did I get that right? Authority Inspections? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. I just wanted to, I didn't know if there was Authority Home Inspections yeah, or authority just inspections. inspections. All right. And that's really because we do commercial as well. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to limit yourself to that, that box of home right. when you can do a, a number of different things. Correct. Well, thanks for coming on here. We, well, we've kind of chatted about getting you on here for a period of time, and, and I'm glad that you, uh, you were able to join us here. But um, for our listeners, um, many of which, most of which own a home or aspire to own a home, um, I think a lot of them will, will realize or, or remember that inspections have kind of been a key thing when purchasing a home. So maybe you can give us a little bit of your history, and, and then we can get into some of the, the ins and outs of home inspections today. Sure, sure. So... Um I started the business in 2014, so this is actually our 10-year anniversary. Oh, nice. Which I'm really excited for. Um, so after being in the construction industry for a long time, um, you know, just getting out there to some of the jobs and seeing the, you know, the, the repair work that we're doing and just some of the homes that people were living in, you know, because they were, you know, unaware of the situation they were getting into and just kind of we're getting in there doing repairs. I just saw a need to, you know, that people need to be informed of what they're buying. So I just started, you know, diving into it, doing some research, and at that point we just dove in head first and just kind of started the inspection business and, you know, it's been great ever since. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, I, I didn't really realize your, your history with, um, the building industry mm -hmm. or, um, so, so maybe was that in, in Baltimore? What were you guys doing? Were you guys doing new home construction or renovations? So in Baltimore, I, I worked for a home improvement company. So okay. we were pretty much, it was a general contractor. Mm -hmm. So we would do anything from, you know, refinishing basements, windows, doors, roofing, siding, you know, pretty much you name it. We would, we would get in and take care of repairs on it, you know, fixing it, you know, whatever needed to be done in the home. So right. you name it, we would fix it. Got it. So you're, you're definitely coming from hands-on construction experience uh, as opposed to just, just book experience. Yeah, know? and personally, um, back in like 2006, I was actually had some investment properties that I went in personally. Me and we had, I had a partner, and we did, went in and did a lot of rehabs in Baltimore City row homes. Okay. So we, we were doing that for a couple of years until obviously 2008 came around and you know, made everything a little bit more difficult on that aspect. Right, right. Well, I mean, I recall back to 2014. I mean, the market was not you know super strong at that point. I think we were just kind of, you know, staying even keel or steady, you know, at, at that point. So that was a, um, you know, probably a pretty good time to get into the business. I would think. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was very good for the, for for the two years that we were in it, and then you know once 2008 came around and the housing crash bubble, whatever they call it, burst. And, you know, it just kind of wiped out everything. And we just got out of that. And, then, you know, kind of at that point, I started, you know, doing little odds and ends, you know, construction type stuff. And then mm -hmm. 2014 came around. That's when I kind of seen a need for it. And it, it just seemed like it was starting to evolve a little more, the right. home, inspection, home inspection industry. Um, so, you know, we just dove in, like I said, head first and just started the business from there, from the ground up. And here we are 10 years later. Got it. Got it. So, so it's your company. You own it. Yes. Um, what What does the company look like today? So, we, right now we have. So we do Baltimore. For, I always say Baltimore to the beach. So we cover Baltimore area. We have three inspectors in Baltimore. Um, right now in Ocean City, it's myself. Um, mm -hmm. Just trying to get down here and you know build the business, make good relationships with people, and just try to you know start building in the business down here. And it's been doing very well. You know, the last two years that we've been here, so we're, we made a lot of relationships really starting to get some business down here so my goal is to hire a guy or two here as well so i'd like to have you know three or four guys in baltimore three or four here and just kind of work both sides of the bridge because um, we travel you know anywhere from you know howard county cecil county um, all the way out to to the ocean here so you know we, we're pretty widespread so we definitely we put a lot of miles on the vehicles put it that way <laughs> oh, i'm sure i'm sure and you've got a very well marked vehicle from what i can tell yes <laughs> yes yes very recognizable when very, it's going up and down the road yes sir Okay, so then, you, but but then you also have somebody else who's pretty key in helping you on the, on the back back end there too a little bit, right? Yeah, the one person I, I, I praise is is my wife. It's actually my wife Tina. Yeah, um, she handles pretty much everything internally, with scheduling, phone calls, um, you know, just kind of making sure everything's lined up as it needs to be. 
Um, yeah. She's kind of the glue that holds everything together. Right. Um, so, you know, if, if it wasn't for her, it'd be a little, a little more stressful for me. So she kind of helps keep that stress level down. <laughs> right, right. And that's who I typically talk to, you know, if we're trying to get something scheduled and she yes. does a great job. And um, also the person that, uh, you know, probably a lot of our clients are going to, you know, reach out to when they call your number to try to get something scheduled. Yep. So. Yeah, she definitely handles, handles a lot. <laughs> and she's always available. And okay. sometimes she, it'll be at nine o'clock at night and she's answering the phone and I'm, you know, like, take a break. And she's like, no, we got to answer the phone. So, yeah, hey, it's all power to her. So she loves it. So can't complain. <laughs> got it. Got it. Well, so, so, I mean, obviously you're covering, you know, the majority of the state of Maryland, um, uh, doing home inspections. Uh, also you said some commercial, commercial work as well. Yeah. We'll do some commercial properties here and there. Um, we don't do a lot of advertisements for it, but we do, we'll do some commercial properties and usually, you know, it's sort of like your Berlin properties where it's almost a almost an old town home or something like, something of the sort so it's it's you know it's pretty much going in and you know just kind of doing our same thing inspecting the property for a potential either le- leasey or buyer so um, so we'll just get in there and do inspection for them so we definitely can do commercial residential with any any needs that people need for inspections we can do it Got it, got it. I've actually done a car wash before, too. Oh, yeah? Well, that's a lot of moving parts, <laughs> yeah. literally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, we don't really get into all the little aspects of everything, but, you know, it's more of the structural and stuff like that, and electrical. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so, so then, like we said, you're doing most of the state, and you're going across county lines. Um, you started in Baltimore. I mean, coming, coming down this way, what, what would you say is the biggest change you've seen, you know, is, is maybe just from when it comes to, like, types of inspections, types of structures that you're doing, and, and how has that affected on the shore here is crawl spaces. Okay. <laughs> like in Baltimore, you know, everywhere really had a basement. You had a you know, for few crawl spaces here and there, but the biggest change coming down here is crawl spaces. Um, you know, and as we know, out of sight, out of mind, people forget about them. So that, that usually tends to be kind of the worst part of the job sometimes if they haven't been, you know, seen for 20 years. <laughs> so, right. And then, you know, another good thing mm-hmm. down here is a lot of condos as well, which, you know, make it make a nice easy inspection and you know it's not a whole lot of moving parts going on you're pretty much interior of the building so there that's a lot different down here so you're seeing a lot of those where you know back in baltimore you have a lot of you know single family homes and row homes not not too many condos right right so you mentioned the, the crawl space piece and, and you know so many of my clients over the years have, have come from baltimore washington dc central pennsylvania you know the, the whole mid-atlantic and in so many of them you're absolutely right have not had crawl space you know and so they ask me like what's what's the you know, what, what's it like going in a crawl space? So, so with that, you're, you're right. Most of us don't, um, take it upon ourselves just for fun to go, you know, commando style through, <laughs> through the, uh, you know, through the crawl space. But what are some things that can come up there? So your biggest problem in crawl space is going to be moisture, okay. um, especially on the shore here. Cause we, you know, we have a high water table. Um, so if you don't really, you know, everything's going to, you're, you're going to have moisture. I mean, it's just inevitable. Um, but it's really about controlling that moisture, um, whether you're putting the sump pump system in, you know, encapsulation, um, you know, just kind of really controlling that moisture. Dehumidifiers are great. So um, most of your new builds now are actually doing all that. They're enclosing the crawl spaces and, you know, encapsulating dehumidifiers. So they're making them really nice and airtight down there now. But when you start getting back into the older homes, 80s, 90s, you know, and you just get a lot of moisture and what happens over years it really deteriorates the structure um i'll go in there i just actually went to one the other day where you know i'm probing the wood and like my screwdriver is just going right through the wood because it's been exposed to moisture for the last 30 40 years Mm -hmm. so it just eats that wood away and you know really messes up the structural integrity of it so um we actually advertise as well that you know if you just need somebody to come out and take a look in your crawl space you know because you have some elderly people here you know that really don't they can't get in there. So we'll, we're, we're advertising, you know, we'll do a crawl space inspection for you, you know, just kind of get in there, see what you got, give you an idea of what you need to do and stuff like that. Got it. Got it. So from, from, you know, like the structural aspect of a home and how a home is built and supported. I mean, what are your differences with, you know, using a, a crawl space versus a full basement? You know I mean? I'm, I'm assuming the support system is kind of supposed to be the same it's just not as deep right yeah it's pretty similar yeah i mean the big difference in in here in the shore is your uh, frost lines are a little different where you know basements in in baltimore i think the frost line may be 30 or 36 inches where here i believe it's 18 inches so you know 
crawl spaces are a little bit easier to do. And plus you can't really dig too deep here anyway because of the water, water table. Yeah. Um, so that's why you see more back in Baltimore area, more basements and stuff. So, but structure wise, it's pretty much the same. You got your you know, foundation and all your, your structural components for your floor joists and beams and all that. So pretty much, it's pretty much the same, just, just a little smaller scale. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, with home inspections that so we talked about the crawl space and then you, you talk about condos. I mean, that's the majority of what I do and have, mm-hmm. have always done in my career is, is condominiums. Um, you know, what would you say, you know, if, if a, a buyer is saying, well, it's just a condo, do I need an inspection? You know, what, what's the benefit there? So the benefit for condos is really going to boil down to your systems and components, um, HVAC systems, you know, we'll get in there, check all that out for you. Uh, water heaters, you know, just really checking all your plumbing, your electrical, you know, you know stuff like that. All your any safety issues that we're going to find. Um, you know, sometimes we're getting into some of these older condos that are stru- uh, concrete structures. You know, and we might see some major settlement going on with the concrete, you know, the ceilings and stuff like that. So that that's far and few between, but it can happen. So it's never a bad idea to have an inspection done. You know, on a condo, and especially you know with the second homes people are buying, usually they're not present. You know, they're in another state purchasing. So it's just a set of eyes for for them to have somebody in there, just kind of know what they're buying. Yeah. So so with that, what will you ultimately inspect in a condo? I mean, do, is is it strictly just wall to wall, floor to ceiling, or are there exterior elements that that might be brought into the inspection as well? So really, the only really exterior element you're going to have on condos is, is your balcony. Mm-hmm. Um, so your balcony structure, your you know your safety rails and stuff like that. Um, and then sometimes we'll get on the roof, depending upon if your mechanical equipment's up there, we'll get on the roof and, you know, if it's, it's in really bad shape, we'll, we'll take some pictures and just kind of give you an idea of what you may be getting into in the future. Cause you know, there's always that reserves that's going to come up or what do they call it when you, when you have to pay your special assessments, special assessments yeah. or something like that. So, yeah. you know, it just kind of gives them an idea of what potentially may be coming down the line. But I guess that's nowadays it has to be exposed anyway. Am I correct on that? There's some disclosure. Yeah, disclosure. yeah. Disclosure. yeah. You know, that, that, that's one of the benefits of buying in, in Maryland and Delaware. There are disclosure requirements, you know, with condominiums right. and HOAs. Um, and as you know, the hot topic in, in, in our area here in the last few months has been the House bill, um, you know, that, that requires these associations to have adequate reserves right, right. Um, to take care of some of the building uh, elements, right. you know, the, the, the roof, the, the walls, the structure, the support, the parking lot, the elevators, all of those things. Mm. Um, but I, what I've always found interesting, I mean, and I've been doing this 22 years and I don't always have the, the right answer or the correct answer. Um, just because every condo is a little bit different, but you know, a buyer will say to me, it's like, all right, so we're out in this balcony. Is this my responsibility or is this the association's responsibility? And it can vary. Yeah. It, it definitely varies from association to association. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Cause <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, when I'm doing the inspections, you know, we always check windows and, mm-hmm. and doors and stuff like that. And I, I imagine some condo associations actually will cover some windows and right. doors. So, but we, you know, we still check them anyway and just kind of let them know what they got. So there's, you know, there's always that, idea where you definitely want to get in and read your HOA document or documents or, you know, make sure you're, you're happy with that. I guess you could say on what coverages are and all that. Yeah. But you know, mainly the exterior is just going to be the balcony and safety rails is kind of what we're focusing on outside. Right. Right. What about crawl spaces with condos? Like that, that's another one too. It's like, you know, it's, if you're a first floor unit, right. And you get the crawl space underneath it, it could affect you more than it might affect the second floor. It could. So technically if it's a building, like a, a large building with a lot of condos in it, we tech, technically, we won't get into the crawl space, but you know, you have these um, condos down here, they're considered condos, but it's almost like a town home. Right. So you have the crawl spaces there, which we will get in and kind of take a look around and just make sure nothing, nothing major is going on for them just so, to, so they know what they have. And then I guess at that point, if there was, it would be pushed over to the condo association if there was some problems, because yeah. I'm assuming that wouldn't be covered in within their condo. Uh, you know, one, they wouldn't be covered by the homeowner once yeah. they got in there, I'm assuming. But Just depends guess, on the association. Yeah, everyone's different, everyone's <laughs> yeah. different I Everybody's guess. Everybody's a little bit different. <laughs> and that's where I, that's why I've liked working with John here is, is like you go out there and you, you do, I mean, I, I always tell my clients, I mean, the, John's going to come out here and he's going to start at the front door and he's going to check everything from the front door to the back door, everything in between. And then he's going to look at any of the exterior elements and how they affect the interior. So if there's a, you know, evidence of a leak by a door, you're going to be able to look at the outside and be like, 
like, hey, there's a good chance it could be coming from here. You yeah. know, check in with the association yes. to see if they've got any plans. We yeah. actually just recently, I think, I think you you did that for us. Um, we had an issue at one of these oceanfront condos not too long ago with um, a sliding glass door not working properly, and you know, we we then checked with the association as to whose responsibility was that. Okay, you know, and there was some there was some moisture, moisture around yeah, think, that yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 I remember that. Yep. So and it happens a lot down here. It's it's I guess because the wind, heavy winds coming off the shore, and you know, just kind of wind driven rain and stuff like that hits different ways and affects things a lot differently. Right. Yeah. Just a funny story. I when I lived in my old house when I was in Baltimore, um, I was there for probably two and a half years, and then one day we had a storm where the wind driven rain. It was blowing the wind different, and my window was leaking. Like I've been there two and a half years and never had a leak. <laughs> Didn't and happen. Just, you know, the wind blew a different way, and now we got a leaky window. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's just weird. Yep. T- totally weird and, 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 and we see that at the beach and it can be Baltimore wherever but you just get that weird like I know down here one of the the winds we don't get very often is like a wind driven southwesterly wind okay. it just doesn't happen <laughs> very often and, and even in our office in Ocean City when we get that wind driven southwesterly wind it's like you start to see water at different spots yeah, that you never yeah. saw before so yeah, that is true but um, okay, so uh, I started this podcast by saying the return of the inspection and the reason I brought that up is is I mean the market's changing a little bit here yeah. You know, it's not as, you know, a couple of years ago, we had so many situations where the inventory was so tight, the demand was so high that we had these multiple offer situations and buyers were saying, you know what, we're going to waive the inspection. We're not going to worry about getting an inspection done. We're just going to buy it, right? But what I'm finding, at least personally, both on the buyer side and the listing side, you know, on the buyer side, I'm, I'm certainly recommending my, my buyers get their inspections done, make sure that they know what they're getting into. And in most cases, they're able to negotiate that in today's market. Mm-hmm. And on the seller side, I'm seeing it where I'm representing the seller, but the buyers are coming in and they're, they're getting the inspections done and they're asking for repairs. So it's, it's kind of good, I'm, I'm guessing, for your business a little bit where we're seeing a few you know, more transactions that are having an inspection be a part of it. Yeah, the, the market's definitely shifting and I would say in our favor as a home inspection company, um, because there was that time, like you said, you know, people were waiving it. You were getting a lot of multi offers. So, you know, that was one way for people to get in and, you know, get the contract accepted was to waive the inspection. I mean, obviously if you're a seller, you're going to take the one that's not doing any inspections and hopefully hope for the best. Um, So that was affecting us a little bit, you know, a couple of years ago, Um, not tremendously, but, you know, because we do have a good following, good referral base. Um, but it, it did, you definitely, you know, see it on the bottom line a little bit. Um, but you know, we've definitely transitioned to now we've seen that people that are selling the homes have been doing the pre-sale inspections right, a little bit right. more, um, just to kind of, you know, get ahead of the game, you know, we'll get in there, you know, give them a full inspection. They'll get a nice list of what needs to be done. And it gives them an opportunity to get some contractors in there to kind of just get it ready for, for, you know, the buyer to come in and do their inspection. And sometimes they can just provide the inspection with you know, what we found with receipts saying that they fixed it and then never prevent the buyer from even have to do inspection. You know, they, right. they'll accept it sometimes, but, but a lot, a lot, and a lot of times they want to have their own representative come in and do an inspection for them, which is understandable, but we've been doing a, quite a few of those uh, pre-sale inspections yeah. recently for sure. Well, I think of, you know, in, in representing clients, right? My, my clients are agents, clients, you know, on, on the buy side, we want our buyers to be number one informed as yes. to what it is they're buying. So they feel good about that purchase. Um, number two, I mean, truly we're, we're there to help them negotiate the best possible terms that they can. Right. And, you know, sometimes during these inspections, things come up. And so I, I truly am a, a believer in, you know, getting inspections completed and how that can benefit the buyer if you're representing a buyer. Yeah, it's very beneficial. I would say, um, just for an example, um, I did an inspection last Saturday for a lady. It was, you know, a single lady moving down here from like Baltimore area. So, you know, we did the inspection, like the roof was bad. The crawl space was terrible. I mean, it was really bad. And, you know, she was a little upset, but her agent took it to the selling agent and they were able to negotiate a new roof, a whole crawl space encapsulation, uh, drain tile system, sump pump, a lot of structural repairs. I mean, I think the agent told me they did like 30 some thousand dollars worth of repairs. So, you know, she was very happy after that, you know, she, and we actually went and did a reinspection afterwards just kind of verifying that everything was done properly and done as they said it was. Right. Um, which is another thing we do a lot of is reinspections and you'd be surprised how many times we go in and you know, they say, Oh, we did all this and we get in there and like half the things aren't done or they're not done properly. So that's another thing that, that I do stress for you know, clients to do 
is a reinspection, especially if there's a lot of repairs involved. Right, right. Yeah, and that's I still think that that's 50-50 as far as whether I'm seeing more inspe- or more repairs versus credits. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm still seeing like credits being used a fair amount of the time and, and then maybe in combination with a few small okay. small repairs. But, I mean, that's a great idea, you know, to have you come back in and just make sure it was done right. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the seller side, you bring that up, and I think that that's, that's huge. I mean, the, I, I will say that in negotiations, I find knowledge is power. Yes. The more the more knowledge you have of the situation, the better off you're going to be ne- to negotiate. I agree. And um, you know, I I think that for a lot of our sellers, you know, as competition increases, the market is a little bit slower than what it once was. Um, you know, and if you have other properties you're competing against, you know, one of the ways to stand out is the fact that you know what we we've, we've had it pre-inspected. Yeah. You know, and these items have been corrected. It's peace of mind for the buyer when they're when they're buying, right? Yeah. So I, I think that's a huge you know uh, offering that you guys yeah, it, have. It definitely goes a long way because you know when we do our inspections, I mean we have pictures of everything as well. So you know obviously that the, the new buyer coming in can take a look at the report, see the pictures, see the new updated you know work that's been done, and can kind of compare the two and know that you know know that the repairs have been done. Yeah. Yeah. So something else that you offer that's unique compared to a lot of inspection companies is, is, is you have a limited warranty of some sort? <clears throat> so we have a roof, roof warranty, which is a five-year roof warranty. Um, so it covers any leaks that may pop up with, for five years of the house. Um, we have a one-year structural mechanical warranty. <clears throat> we have a one-year, it's a sewer guard warranty, which covers underground water and sewer lines, which is a really cool one as well. Um, What's the other? And uh, mold safe. <clears throat> so we have a mold safe warranty. So if, you know, if we're doing this, doing the inspection, and say, you know, there's some mold that was missed or we didn't see, and the people move in, they happen to see it, they'll cover remediation for that. So there, there's some nice limited warranties that we can provide to the um, to the potential buyer. And as well. that's all included in the yeah, it's in all the inspection in the fees. <clears throat> and we also the seller, um, if we do a pre inspection, they can actually transfer those warranties over to potential buyer as well. So. It definitely helps out that way as well. Just gives you a little bit more incentive as a as a buyer or a seller to to use our company. I guess you could say. So how would that work? I mean, I guess if if they get in there, I mean, you, you obviously are going to do a very thorough inspection, and then they they settle on the property. They're in there, and and like you said, they get that that sneaky southwest wind <laughs> driven rain, and there's yeah. a little bit of you know water coming in. What would what would they do? So at that point, we have a um, system that we'll send them over. Um, it's a link that they'll fill out some form, you know, fill out some information. We'll upload the report, you know, just making sure that any repairs that we did recommend were done properly. Um, they'll ask for receipts and stuff like that, but say it's a roof leak. Um, you know, if the roof was fine when we did an inspection, no signs of leaks or anything, they'll just have to fill the form out. They'll have a contractor come out, do an estimate of what the, what the repairs would be, send it over to the warranty company. And then most of the time they'll just write them a check and hmm. for the repairs, and then, you know, same thing with, um, say, you know, they move in, we do the inspection, the oven's working fine. Um, they move in, it stops working. They fill out the form, send it to the warranty company. And nine out of time, nine out of 10 times, they'll just, you know, pay for repairs or replacement, whatever they need. Wow. Them. That's okay, huge so in it's, itself. It's, it's definitely a very good incentive, I think, for, for um, potential buyers, for sure. Right, right. Yeah, it just gives a little peace of mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So w- with regard to... Um, inspections i mean obviously with a condo we're, we're talking pretty much just a structural mechanical mm-hmm. but what is your menu of services look like what do you offer as an inspection company so we like to you know go at, use the motto one-stop shop um because personally you know our company internally we do structural mechanical inspections which you know your regular home inspection yeah. uh, we do radon testing uh, which not a lot of people around here do the radon testing we do a lot of it in baltimore area Mm-hmm. Um, we do mold testing so we can come in do an air analysis of you know the air in the home just kind of see if there's any potential mold issues and stuff like that um, we do termite inspections we're licensed for those and we're actually licensed in Maryland and Delaware too so we're yep. doing work in Delaware um, and then when you get to the well and septic we have some close referral companies that we'll, we'll, we will refer out to for those um, types of inspections because mm-hmm. uh, we don't in house do those but if you call us and say hey we need a well and septic we can get it scheduled for you um, chimney inspections as well. We have companies that we work closely with that are getting those done as well. 
So those aren't in house, but we can, you know, you call Tina. You can coordinate she can get, it. She can get everything scheduled for you. So you make one call to Tina and tell her what you need. She can get everything scheduled. Yep. So that's okay. where she's great at that. Just kind of getting the, getting everything done for you. It makes it a little easier for, for the realtors just to make one call. Right. Versus calling three, four different people. And what do you prefer with that? I mean, is it, is it the, you know, I'm a little old school where I pick up the phone and be like, Hey, we need an inspection. Is it, is that the preferred way of doing it? Or are you seeing most people are going online, making a request? Like what, what, how does it work? So we, we have a lot of both. Um, you know, we have a lot of calls. We do have an online system where you can schedule online and we actually have, um, what's called a real estate dashboard where agents can get their own dashboard. Um, and you can put it on your, your home screen for your computer, click on it. I mean, for your phone, click on it and you can see any past inspections. You can check availability. You can put in an order for an inspection. So that makes it, makes it a lot easy to schedule. So, you know, we even, you can even text over to Tina and she'll get it scheduled for you. So, you know, any, we have a lot of avenues to get an inspection scheduled. Right. Right. And then what's your turn time like? I mean, you know, the uh, I, I've always found you to be extremely flexible when it when it comes to getting things done. So yeah, in, in this market, I mean, we're we're we're, you know, a day or two out. Usually um, I can usually get something done, you know, sometimes the next day, maybe two days, but mm-hmm. usually not not a long wait. Yeah. Back when it was really crazy back, I guess it was 2020, maybe or so we mm-hmm. were we were maybe three or four, five days out sometimes. And it was making it a little tough because then people were putting more lower contingency times, you know, they're putting three or five days. So it, it was really put a little stress on, on our, you know, on our structure, but right. it, it, we were able to work through it. Got it. And then, you know, for as far as how fast the report is done, that's, that's pretty darn quick yeah. too. From Reports what come I- out like immediately after inspection, almost immediately. And there's a little time, time lapse, you know, for proofreading and stuff like that. But, you know, the program we use, it's, very easy to work with and you know we go through our, we do everything on on our mobile device um so the report's done on there we put it to a cloud bring it on a computer and just kind of proofread it and then off it goes mm-hmm. yep and it's sent out probably i would say within an hour okay usually. so for our clients this is this always comes up too is is, is you know we'll we'll have clients that they're from baltimore they're from central pa wherever they come in town for the weekend um, we're fortunate enough that we find the right one. We write an offer. We negotiate it. Um, we we really get the best terms possible for for our our buyer clients. And, and now we're under contract. And um, so they were here on the weekend. And we've got say seven days to get that inspection done. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on the buyer needing to attend versus not needing to attend? So our reports are very descriptive. So when we do our reports, we have pictures of everything. We, you know, we, we make a lot of notes in there for them. So we try to make it um, to where the buyer really can just look at the report, answer all their questions, and not even really have to call us back for anything. But, you know, you right. have some buyers that want to know some things differently that, that they might not see in there or something that they may have seen they just want a little explanation on. Um, but we try to make it as easy as possible for the, for the reports to be read and, and really not have to you know, not have to really question much. So it's always great for the buyers to be there. Um, especially, I mean, if you're a first time home buyer, it's highly recommended. Um, but you know, if you're a second home buyer, you know, you're buying a condo, it, it's not really necessary because we'll get in there and we'll take very good care of you. You know, make sure we do a very thorough inspection and be, and be available if you have any questions afterwards, for sure. Right. And, and that's what I've found. You know, I yeah. found that you've been, you guys are super smooth. And like you said, the report is done. Um, so quickly, you're hitting our windows, and and that's that's as an agent. I mean, we have a team and transaction management within our team, but I mean, there's a lot of independent agents out there, individual agents that you know they're managing every step of the process. And one of the biggest concerns is is obviously making sure we hit our our contingencies, right? yes, yes, which are timelines. <laughs> yes, and and I found you to be just super um, flexible and and, and turning that report pretty quick. Sometimes I'm not even back at the office yet, and the report <laughs> the report's already in my inbox. Yeah. So it's it's been extremely helpful for That's us. It's funny. One thing I've noticed a big difference from here in the Baltimore area is that the contingencies in Baltimore are very slim. I, I've dealt with three to five days sometimes. Okay, we're here. It seems a little more laid back, so I'm seeing 10, 10 to 14 days sometimes, yeah. so, which is which is great for us. <laughs> it gives us a little bit of time, um, but you know, back in Baltimore, it's just like boom, 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 get it done. 
Right. We want it done. We want it done yesterday. <laughs> well, if you're representing a seller, you want it done yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you know, for sure. For a buyer, you know, obviously, um, you know, we build in a little bit of time if there's if we need to get estimates or something yeah, else yeah, afterwards. Sure. Which brings up a good point. I mean, do, do you get? I mean, your, your job is to really go out inspect what is there. Um, you know, if if a buyer needs recommendations on pricing or what it would cost to to make some of these repairs, do you have a guide or a place that you send them? Like, what, what so, what's the best way there? So for, for estimates, um, I can usually give them a pretty good ballpark figure um, because I was in the industry. Right. Um, and actually, the guys that work for me have been in the industry as well. I, I kind of try to focus on employees that have a good background in the construction area. Right. Um, so, you know, between our, our guys that we have in the field, they can usually get, get you in the ballpark. Um, you know, over the years, you know, everybody knows that manufact- um, uh, you know, manufacturer prices have changed, you know, labor prices have changed and, you know, just everything has gotten higher. So it's a little more difficult to pinpoint prices, but we can get you in the ballpark range. But we do have a good referral base of contractors that, you know, if you need like somebody to come out and look at something, you know, we can just make a quick call or give you a number and, and they'd be more than happy to come out and do a kind of estimate, free estimate, you know, if it was whether a roof, roof repair or crawl space you know, repairs and stuff like that. So we, we have a good, good rapport with a lot of contractors that can, can take care of that. Got it. Got it. Okay. So what am I missing? What, 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 what's important that I'm, I'm not thinking about when it comes to inspections? Um, I would say one thing that I'm really excited about that we recently started was our pay at close option for, for potential buyers. Okay. Um, so what that does, you know, as we know, everything's a little tight nowadays. You know, people don't have money to throw around left and right. So we put the pay a close option in place, which we actually work with a third party bank. Um, so what happens is, you know, we schedule an inspection, they fill out an agreement. We actually get put on the closing documents so they don't have to come out with money out of pocket with any money during the inspection. Everything gets rolled into the closing costs. So you almost, you know, you almost don't see it because, you know, closing costs are a little pricey. So it just kind of gets rolled in there, the few hundred dollars for the inspection that it would be. And it also gives them an opportunity, you know, if, if they're a little strapped for cash, but they want to do a mold test. So, because mold tests can get a little pricey. So it gives them the option to add on some more ancillary services. Um, that's one thing I really am excited about. It just really helps out the, the community a lot by just helping them, you know, not have to come out of pocket with that money. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's, that's one good thing I like. Right. Yeah. I mean, because there is, I mean, depending on the program, depending on the buyer, depending on, you know, the, the loan that they're going after some of that, I mean, could be, we we could have negotiated for them closing cost assistance, right. Which could be applied towards the home inspection. Right. You know, but you wouldn't be able to do that ahead of time. It would have to be on the closing sheet. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. So that's a pretty good option to be able to put that into the closing costs. A lot of of people have taken advantage of it. It's, it's, it's a good option, you know, especially first time buyers that are kind of strapped for cash and, you know, have to have those closing costs or whatever the case is, but it's definitely a good program, I think. With your, the um, mold mildew test that you um, do, what does that entail? Is that a, um, you mentioned air quality. Is that like a canister that gets put in the property for a period of time? Do you, how, how are you capturing that information? So that is, so we have a machine, it's, it's an air analysis machine that we take and um, it's just a little cartridge that we put on it. It's a 10 minute sample that we take through the air. We, you know, typically we'll do one on each floor okay. um, or any problem problematic areas that we feel might have some moisture issues uh, we'll take that test and then we ship it out to the lab and usually the next day they have the results back saying you know whether there's higher levels you know it even tells you what type of mold that it is if there is mold in the property um, so it's you know it's very good for people you know that may have asthma or compromised immune systems or stuff like that and you know a lot of times you know being in the industry for a while i can walk into a house and just smell and almost tell you like you know this is I smell some problem, you know, like moisture. You can smell that moisture sometimes. Right. So, you know, I'll, I might, I may recommend, you know, you might want to do a mold test, air test, just to make sure, you know, the house is clean and safe. And sometimes they'll take advantage of it, sometimes not. But, um, it's, yeah, it's a pretty easy process for us. And then we just mail the samples out and back comes the report and we'll send it out. How much flexibility does a, a consumer have if, if, you know, say they want to get out there, they, they um, talk to Tina and it's like, what inspections do you want? And they're like, well, we don't 100% know yet. Mm-hmm. You know, is there, the, is there a possibility sometimes that, that um, they go out, you'll do a structural mechanical and then you see something and then at that point we could work on the fly to add an inspection? Oh, yeah. That, that can, yeah we keep all our equipment in, in our vehicles. So anytime somebody wants to add anything, we have you know, equipment on hand to take care of it. Got it. Yeah, we keep Got the it. trucks fully stocked with everything needed to do any type of inspection. 
Got it. Okay. All right. So before I let you off the hook, obviously we went, I think we were pretty thorough with, um, you know, the benefits of the inspection, how they can be done. Um, what with crawl spaces, right? Um, any stories, any crazy stories, things you've come across or, or um, in a crawl space, in attics? Uh, I'll tell you, you know, being in the business for a while, I, you name it, I've probably seen it. Yeah. Uh, I've run into raccoons, snakes, squirrels, um, mice, you know, any kind of rodent you can think of, insects. So really, you name it, I, I've pretty much seen it all. <laughs> so, you know, and, you know, I've become immune to it. You know, I just take my, I have some tools that I take in with me. So in case I see a snake, I can kind of shoo them away or, you know, whatever right. the case is. So, um, and, you know, personally, I'm not really afraid of any of them. So, and I always, you know, if you don't bother them, they won't bother you. So I've seen pretty much anything, you name it. The biggest one I've seen, I uh, went into an attic and I ran into a family of, raccoons i think there might have been six or seven of them up oh, there wow. and the crazy thing is they must have been in there for years because the whole attic was just filled with rodent i um, mean raccoon droppings like everywhere it was pretty bad <laughs> yeah and i think they've been in there probably five, five or ten years i mean it, they were just living in there it was a vacant home yeah and uh, it was that was probably one of the craziest things i've seen <laughs> it's always something yeah we always come across something yeah I, that's one thing i like about inspections it's always a different day um, you know, no two days are the same. You're always going to see something different for sure. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> keeps it exciting. Keeps yeah. you on your toes. The highs and the lows. You know, I've I've seen very happy clients and not so happy clients. You know, and it, it's just you know we're, we're there to kind of give them our unbiased opinion of what we see, and it's not always a good thing. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and I get that. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, as much as somebody wants to buy a property, sometimes it, it sometimes is just there's some things that need to uh, maybe they aren't working out, or you know that it's not the end of the world. We just have to address it. Yeah. You know, we got to figure out how we can have a conversation and, and work it out. Yeah. That's one thing I always stress to buyers, you know, anything can be fixed. I mean, it, you know, it just comes down to negotiations at that point. Right. And then like, you know, your realtor, that's where their job comes into play is just starting doing negotiations. And like I said, the one I did last weekend, they negotiated $30,000 worth of repairs. So right. anything can be fixed. It's just a matter of getting in there and, you know, getting it done right. for sure. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here today. I think it's extremely in, uh, informative and I think it's extremely valuable to our clients, uh, both on the buyer side and the seller side, you know, to, to have an inspection. Yeah, no problem, Ryan. So, I really appreciate you having me today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks so much. If you guys like this information, please share it with a friend. Um, if you like this, this information, you like this channel, please subscribe and we will see you back here next week with another edition of the Running Real Estate Podcast.